So tonight and today, it's uh, 10 o'clock at night, I'm doing a brisket flat, um, but I'm going to barbecue one, I'm going to smoke it and then sous vide it to finish. I've, I've done this once before and the effort to reward ratio is just way higher than smoking it for the whole period. Um, so I'm going to do four or five hours with a fairly heavy um, oak smoke and then bag it. And I've got the sous vide running. It's kind of ugly, but it's clean and it's well insulated. So this Innova is designed for a 20 litre container and this is a 40 litre, but because it's so well insulated, it actually doesn't, doesn't seem to mind. So that's 85 degrees, so once the meat's in there, it'll sit in there for 10, 15 hours, then I'll put the heat up to 95 for the last couple of hours tomorrow. And then depending on what the bark looks like, I might dry the bark out with a, a searzel or a propane torch, or maybe put it back in the smoker to get the bark to dry out and look good, because the bark does go a little bit soft. So anyway, I need to go and uh, quietly um, light a fire in the offset and get it warmed up. Okay, so um, the fire has just, just been lit. Uh, it's going to take a while to warm up. I'm okay if it takes an hour or so to warm up. So what we've got in there is a little bit of lump wood and some logs on top and that'll take a while to get going, but that's fine, it can take all the time it needs. Because of the whole, <coughs> because of the whole sous vide thing, the, t the time is not really that critical, so I'll let that get hot. So the smoker is running, it's not actually up to temp yet, it's at, uh, I don't know, about 180 F or something, but because I'm not actually cooking the meat, I'm just getting some smoke into it. I'm not that worried about the temperature. Um, I'm just more worried about getting the right type of smoke on it. So we've got a good smoke now. Also, it's late at night and it's a warm day, so the neighbours will have windows open. So I want to make sure I keep the blue smoke because the white smoke smells horrible and it's really acrid. So I'd rather put the meat on now. I'm not going to put a probe in it because I'm not really that worried about the internal. I want also it's rubbed in salt and pepper, sort of Texan kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to stick it. It's been about three hours and the fire is really, really nice. So I just thought I'd do a video. There's a couple of heat beads in there to provide the ember bed and the logs on top are burning well. The smoke's good, really hot, almost too hot. <laughs> but just had a quick look at the meat, looks fine. Got another two hours to go. Okay, so it's been about five hours. And I'm ready to go to bed. So we're going to have a look. This door is really noisy. Okay. It shrunk quite a bit as you'd expect. It's really hard and tough. Really moist on the surface. The bark I mean, is kind of wet just from the fat that's been rendering out. So I'm going to put the phone down to get it in the tray. Okay, so now we're in the light, we can see that the meat's gone red, which is good because that just shows the smoke's gone into it. It's obviously a very pepper heavy rub, or it's just pepper and salt really, so. I now I need to quickly make up a bag to put this in because I've, the only bag I've got wide enough is like a rubble. Make the bag a lot longer than it needs to be because it's really important, well you all know this, it's really important that you don't get stuff on the outside so you fold it over. Um, it fits in there just, it's shrunk a lot, I mean it was two inches too wide to fit in the bag before, but it did fit in just. So now I need to get all the air out. So I'm just going to vac vacuum seal it. It's only a cheap one. So I always find if you rub, like massage the bag, doesn't really matter so much now, but when it starts to get most of the air out, if you massage the bag, it helps to make sure the vacuum doesn't just suck the plastic together. And then the machine thinks it's got all the air out and it hasn't. So you just rub it with your fingers and it really helps to make sure it gets all the air out. There we go, that looks good, doesn't it? Looks like a bit of like smoked mackerel from Marks and Spencer's or something. So one other thing I am going to do is I'm going to double seal because the last time I did a brisket the bag leaked and 
it was horrible. I came down in the morning and the smell was vile. It was like smoky beef broth. It sounds nice, but oh my god, it was horrible. I had to like bale water out of the water of the sous vide tank to try and reduce the beef content in the water because the smell was horrible. Right, it's done now. <coughs> so there we go. Kind of neat. Here is the sous vide tank. It's uh, been running for a couple of hours. So, can you go beef? See in the morning. One thing I am going to do, because the Anovas, they're good, but they've done the odd weird thing every now and again. A couple of times they've just stopped regulating the temperature and they've just put the heating element on full and it's just got really hot and I don't fully trust them. So I'm going to put a Maverick in the probe in the water, take the Trent receiver upstairs and set some limits just in case the Anova dies. And if it does, I've got two more that I can swap out. So I have to come down at five in the morning because the Anova's freaked out. I'll just change it for another one and nothing will be damaged apart from the Anova. I've been through a few of these, though. they're not the, they're not the most reliable, but they're better than that cheapo back tech piece of shit from EK Twin. So I've just stabbed the probe for potential. This um, insulation is a Celotex household insulation. I just stabbed the probe through the foam, and it's out the top. <laughs> tip of the probe, you can't really see it. The tip of the probe is just in the water by about half an inch. I've just realised that's actually really good because that means if the water level goes down. If it evaporates out, it leaks, so it shouldn't do. But if it randomly leaks in the night and the, the water level drops below the level of the probe, the probe temperature will obviously drop and it will wake me up. So that's pretty decent. And it's nice to see the Maverick and the Anova agreeing so well. 0.2 of a degree, 0.1 of a degree. Yeah. So I go to bed with the Maverick, reasonably comfortable that. Nothing will go wrong, other than the fact the bag might split, which has never happened before, apart from that one time when it did happen. But it was so awful when it did happen, I really don't want it to happen again. But hopefully it won't. <laughs> it is half nine in the morning the next day, and the Nova is fine, everything's fine. The bag's not leaked. So... Nothing to do really, but um, leave it. So, easiest brisket ever, really. It's now half past one. Just taking the brisket out, just to have a look at it. So you can see quite a bit of moisture is rendered out, but it's really soft. I might say that the brisket sort of should wobble, and you can see that it's doing that already. It's really, really squishy. So that's great. Um, there's this theory that brisket soaks moisture back up when it starts to relax. I don't know how true that is, but it's sitting in its own juices, so if it does soak moisture back up, it's, it's there for it. So I'm going to put it back in for another couple of hours. I need to put more water in there. Tank's getting a bit low. So another maybe three hours. We should be, uh, should be ready. There we go. I put the temperature up to 95. Do you want to look in the car before I lock it? Yeah, fine. <laughs> And it's basically um, the bag split, which isn't great. So need to dry it off. Brisket is very soft, almost to the point where it's like a pork butt. I mean, it's, but the bark is wet. This is the brisket that we sous vide so we'll see what it looks like. Oh, it's pretty soft. It's quite flaky at the edges. So, whilst I was actually cutting this, I was chatting to other people because a friend appeared behind me. And so what I was saying whilst I was cutting it isn't really relevant, but anyway. So, all in all, this worked reasonably well, but... Um, I, the first time I did this, I read an article about 
doing this and smoking a brisket and then finishing it in the sous vide. And the person that wrote the article said to put the put the heat up to 95 degrees for the last two hours, which I did the first time I did this and it worked fine. I think if I did this again, I wouldn't do that for a couple of reasons because the meat was really soft and flaky and, and it was okay but I mean, if I cut it much thinner than I'm you're seeing in the video it would have just flaked off the knife as it had gone through. The other problem is is 95 degrees just seems to be too hot for the Innova and it's steamed and the Innova filled with water and tripped the power out in the house and now it's dead. So having said earlier in this video that the yeah, Anova can so sometimes do some weird things. It has done a weird thing and yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's broken, so I'm going to have to talk to Anova about Their customer service is really good. They'll just send me another one, most likely. But, yeah, so I probably next time wouldn't turn the temp up to 95. I would maybe take it out an hour or so before and put it in the smoker if I had a smoker running. But all in all, it, it looks great. It's got the smoke ring. It pulls apart easily. It's still moist. And unfortunately, the bag did the did, did leak, and I think that was just down to the fact that I put it to 95 and it was just too hot for the plastic. But as you can see here, as I pull it, it, it does the right kind of thing. So yeah, I, I would much rather do this than babysit a stick burner for 20 hours. So. Yeah, better than uh, the old-fashioned way, in my opinion.